Shut up and sit down. What is going on, Dad? And welcome to episode 21.5 of the Dad's After the Dark Show, recorded on Sunday, October 11th, 2020. Three hosts, Drew and John, with special guest, third stronger small Sam, joining us tonight. Hello. So, uh, thank you for joining us tonight for some Nintendo and the Lord of the Underworld. No, not that mole holes underground. I'm talking about, folks, the king of the undead Hades. We are here to talk about Hades, everything about it. Maybe some spoilers out there for you guys that are listening. But Sam, welcome to the show. How you been, buddy? I've been good. It's a, it's a long weekend for me. I am in the enviable position of one of the lucky few who gets Columbus Day off oh, yeah. each I'm year. Out. Come Me on, too. you guys. I am one of those lucky as well. <laughs> um, so, so Hades, John, tell us a little bit about uh, the game itself, high level. Well, obviously we've loved Hades enough to do a review of a non-Nintendo Nintendo game. Um, but for anybody, we're going to be doing a lot of spoilers in this, but for anybody who just wants to listen in, has no interest in playing Hades, um, yeah, we'll give a little description here. So Hades is a roguelite, oh, I hate the term, uh, it's a roguelite game. Uh, basically, you are the son of Hades, your name is Zagreus, and you want to get out of the underworld. Um, there's a story that comes about re- involving who your mother is. And you're trying to just get out of the world. Um, Generally, the gameplay is there's a kind of a hub world where there's a certain set of characters you can interact with. Um, You'll pick a weapon and then you'll jump into a run. Um, The run involves uh, what I guess I'd say like four different worlds, um, each with their own boss. And um, the general gameplay is you enter a chamber, you're going to fight a bunch of enemies, you clear the chamber and then you go through a door And on each door is an item that you're going to be getting in the next room. And so you can decide which way you want to go. Maybe you want some money to use in the shop. Maybe you want to upgrade your weapon with the, you know, the hammer upgrade. Maybe you want the power of some god. And many of the gods are represented here. So you can get help from Zeus, for example, and he might give you some sort of lightning um, capability on your attack or your special attack or something like that. And so every run is different. Every time the the rooms have different power-ups, even if you run into Zeus over and over and over again, he might offer you different um, upgrades. We call them boons in the game. And so every every you know every run is different. And just like with any roguelike game or roguelike, um, you have to kind of you have to go with what's given to you. So you might have a strategy going in. Maybe you know you have a, a certain upgrade that you really like, but you might not get that upgrade, and you just have to go. Um, there's all sorts of ways to improve your character as you go through. You'll go through all the boss battles, um, and there'll be shops and lots of other random events that occur. And there's just a lot of strategy, just like with a lot of these games, where how much do you want to gamble on fighting some extra enemies to get a little extra power up? Or when do you not want to do that? Um, you eventually go through, and you're going to be fighting Hades in the end. Um, and then there's a lot of post-game after that. So, mm-hmm. um that, I think, is basically it. Once you die, um, you come back to the underworld, because naturally you died. And from there, you can use a lot of the items that you got in your run to upgrade yourself. So you can um, do improvements such as getting gaining a certain amount of health every time you finish a chamber or something like that. Um, you can upgrade your weapons so they start out more powerful. Um, you can unlock new weapons. There's about six in the game. And uh, yeah, you get every every time you get run, you run through, even though you fail and you will fail over and over in the beginning. Um, your next run is going to be easier to succeed with. Uh, it makes this game really addicting, really fun. Um, it's a great game. It's developed by Supergiant Games. Um, they did Bastion. They did Transistor. They did Pyre. And uh, it's just got great quality. It'll actually feel a lot like those games. Um, in fact, I had just played Transistor recently, and it feels a lot like Transistor. Um, so it came out last month, $25 in the eShop. Uh, worth every penny. What do you think, guys? 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, as I alluded to earlier and a few other times, at first I was a little thrown off, but it is absolutely worth the money. Uh, like you said, $25 currently. I think we got it on sale when it first came out for 20 and I've already mm-hmm. put 30 plus hours in. I mean, Sam, you probably, I know you've been playing it a lot. You probably have even more than that. Uh, yeah, probably at about 30. Um, I will say I'm kind of running out of steam on it now, but I yeah. mean, I, I definitely feel like I got my money's worth. I would recommend it. Um, I, I know I said earlier that I don't think it a hundred percent deserves every single bit of the hype, but it, it's, there's a reason people are hyping up, you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's not really overrated by much. I don't think No, it's well, it's well polished. Right. Um, and, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to say to Dan, since this is our Hades podcast here, but there was a lot of stuff in the beginning, the first three hours of the game that really turned me off. And I feel like you really need to fight through that. And, and I talked to John about this, but my feeling was, is there was a lot of unknowing of, of what, what am I supposed to do in those first three hours? Right. Um, and I get maybe that's the way the game was designed. I think the story was fine, well explained, but there's so many things to do. So when you start the game off, you start into this central hub, right? Um, which is like Hades Lair type thing, whatever. I don't know if there was a name for it. Um, and, there's, and you can explore it. It's not massive by any means. It's small. There's a bunch of different little rooms that each, each serve their purpose. But you do feel a little lost. So, for example, you're not even sure how to start a game. Right. I mean, there's these all these rooms you have to go through really, you know, into your bedroom, into the next room, into a third room just to start the game. And you have to go select a weapon. There's 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 a lot of stuff to do where you're not really instructed on what or where to go. Um, but with that being said, I, I do like the central hub location. There is a lot of people to talk to every time you talk to them, whether you just beat Hades or you just died. There's there's new dialogue. There's new story. And that, that goes with the characters and you're learning more about yourself as a character. So that part of it was great. Um, but at the same time, all these people that you can talk to, right. You know, there's, there's a chef you have to turn um, certain things into. There's, there's a bunch of merchants. There's a trader. Um, there's, there's a lot of people to talk to that, again, that you just trying to get lost in without really knowing. And, you know, the more you play, don't get me wrong. Now, you know, exactly where everybody is, you know, who do you need to talk to? Um, but that first central chamber, let's say, I mean, what's what's your guys' feedback as far as the exploration of it and, and really talking to people and unlocking things? Well, and I would add to that, too, Drew, that uh, the icons can just be confusing. You know, you mm-hmm. do your first run and you see a couple doors and some things you might be able to figure out like, oh, that coin gets me money that I can probably <laughs> spend on something. Mm-hmm. But then you're like, well, what is the, what does the gemstone do? And what does this key do? And yeah. the game doesn't explain any of that to you until you've at least died once. And some of those, not until like your third or fourth run. Yeah. Like you don't, I don't think you even see the contractor your first time coming back. So mm-hmm. you don't, you're like, okay, yeah. I got these rocks, these gemstones. What do I do with them? Mm. Yeah, no, exactly. And then and then again, it goes back to the point now that the way the game is designed is fine, but you're choosing a door to go to your next room or encounter based on what's above it, right? So like you said, the first three runs, I don't know what the hell a gemstone's for. So it's like, <laughs> I'm t- probably not going to choose that one right now. You know, and it seemed like the T's were very important in the beginning, right? Because um, the T's are what unlocks the additional weapon so of course you're like i want to try every weapon because i want to see them all before you know i make my final decision um again so i think that central hub has a lot of impact and a lot to they they throw a lot at you right there's they don't really you can slowly unlock certain things right but there's but for the most part a lot of it is thrown at you um john what's your take on all of that yeah i I really enjoy those first runs. You like die. And I, you know, just like with most roguelike games, like I couldn't even get to the first boss for a while. And you're trying to figure out what the icons mean. And then eventually I was able to get to the first boss. And to me, that was like, oh, this must be the final boss in the game. Because I mean, like, (laughs) there's no way you can get much further than this. Um, But the fun part is in the early part of the game, every run like ends with like some major thing. Like the first time you can get like one health you know, after a chamber is like, ooh, that's super exciting, you know, because 
I remember health being really hard to find. There's not a lot. There's, I don't think there's many health items at all. Yeah. Um, and I, my health was always my biggest problem when I first started playing this game. Um, but yeah, like every time you do a run, you learn two or three new things and you're just ready to go. It's very addictive early on. Okay. Um, there's some new character to talk to and you meet Nick's and all that jazz. So, um, yeah. yeah, it took me, I don't know how many runs it took me to finally get past the first boss. Um, but it took a little while. And, uh, and then by the time you get that and you've really started to figure out that stuff, it's, 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 it's fun, man. It gets addicting. Agreed. Um, so one of the main rooms off this, this central chamber is your bedroom. And there's a few things you can do here. So um, useless. Well, there's really three things I find going on there, right? One, there's your bed where you can every once in a while sleep in, which gives really? you. Really? It gives you, um, well, it, it, it progresses the story really, right? The, it, it goes to some type of cut dialogue where. Your it's dream like a flashback. Cut. Yeah, which gives you story development, right? It's it's, it's okay. I get it. Um, the other one that you lock a little bit later is your desk, which is essentially achievements, I guess you could say, right? Um, which I find like yeah. I, I barely have done any of them. You know, every once in a while you see the exclamation point, meaning you completed one, you go over there, you claim your reward. Um, and then there's the mirror. The mirror becomes your best friend once you realize exactly what it is. And the mirror is uh, has all these perks, right? Uh, where essentially this is where it becomes your roadish type style, where you collect these purple darkness, I think they're called, right? Mm -hmm. um, throughout every level you play, and those go to this mirror where you can upgrade stats, right? So you can permanently upgrade your health, you can permanently upgrade um, your your cast, you can permanently upgrade. Um, all types of different little parts like that that make you stronger and better in the game. Now, Sam, you you discovered, I remember reading it from you in Discord, I think this was several hours into the game, um, that all of these parts that you upgrade actually have like a flip side, I guess you could say, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like the very first one makes you deal more damage when backstabbing enemies when attacking from behind mm -hmm. and if you choose the alternate instead it makes you deal more damage to enemies that are at full health so the first time you hit an enemy you do like double damage yeah um i did not know this until i successfully completed a run by then <laughs> um, now the good thing is you can spend a key to refund all your darkness and respend it um, but early on, you're not going to want to do that because you want to unlock weapons with those keys. Yep. So late game, there's nothing else to really do with keys. Uh, you can trade them for. That's what I was doing. Pennies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, technically, you can exchange resources, but that is one of my gripes with the game, especially when you get late in and yep. all you want is Titan blood and you keep getting more gemstones mm. and you can buy keys for gemstones and trade gems and trade keys for nectar and trade nectar for diamonds and trade diamonds for am for ambrosia and ambrosia for titan blood <laughs> but it will, it will get that, that is a it, terrible exchange rate it, it's it's rough it is it, it's very rough and we'll get to that a little bit later on how you get more of those um so that's the bedroom that's the mary lot of upgrades john you have any comments on those upgrades yeah i mean like yeah early on um you know, it's like you're just pouring those in, but you don't have a ton of darkness because you're really not getting too far into the game. Mm -hmm. I find now as you get deeper into game, you can have, you know, hundreds of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, I could have upgraded everything all in one shot with a run <laughs> like this. Exactly. Um, but it, it is fun because it does it does when sometimes when you die, you're like, what's my hope for my next run? Have I improved as a fighter? Mm -hmm. um, you know what? And the darkness actually says, hey, you're going to go in. You're going to have more health. You're going to have more attack from reverse. You're going to have all of these different things that'll help you just a little bit more. And mm -hmm. it, it does motivate you to go in again, because if you didn't have that, you'd be like, well, I'm going to go in again and I'm going to die in the same place, aren't I? So um, I, I, I do like that. And then you can expand those capabilities. And then, like you said, flip them and, and try some of the alternates a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I do like it. But other than that, the room, you know, I think the only time you sleep is when you want to advance like major storylines in the game. Yeah. I think I've done it twice. Yeah, it doesn't, um, it's not all. Not the time. sure what triggers it. If it's a Hades thing with gifts or not, 
Um, but I've done it a couple times. Uh, yeah, and he goes to bed and he's like, I'm not tired. And it's like, I am. <laughs> like, can we go to bed, you know? Um, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, so again, still in this centralized chamber, um, off of your bedroom, right? So you have to find your bedroom. Off of your bedroom is now the weapon room where a lot is happening, right? Um, you start the game with with just your your blade or your sword, right? Um, and then you can slowly start unlocking more weapons, as Mo alluded to earlier, with keys that you find throughout the levels. Um, and uh, there's what? Six total? One, two, three, four. Six okay, total, six. right? So, yeah. so you have the blade, which is the sword. Um, you have a, a bow slash crossbow type thing. What's your guys' take on this? I played one or two runs with this. It's it's a definitely a different type of playstyle. It's a slow playstyle, I find. Um, what's your guys' take on it? Like a distance. Um, the, it's, it's so the strong, bow, but the slow. bow was the when I was doing the sword, I wasn't totally feeling the game yet. I was playing it, but once I unlocked the bow, and I was like, let me give that a try. Um, it's not usually in my comfort zone, and I just had a lot of fun with it. And I got a lot further the first time I used the bow. You could keep your distance from enemies, which was really helpful. Um, because I felt like my initial struggles were that I had to go in and fight, and I didn't know the enemy patterns well, so mm. I was just constantly taking damage, taking damage. But with the bow, I could stay away, I can shoot them, and it's really effective early in the game. Um, yeah. it isn't until the enemies start really getting in on you that the bow becomes much harder to use. Um, yep. But I really did love the bow. Um, I used that for many runs before I gave it up. And uh, oh. I know I, I really did like that one. And the nice thing about using these weapons is that you can use the weapons when you beat the bosses. You can get those items. Um, if you keep using the same weapon, you won't get all the really cool items. So right. it does pay to try different weapons. I've done runs, especially lately, where I'll use a weapon that may, I might not have used before. Like I used the gauntlets a couple of days ago and you know, I got through the first couple bosses and it was like, yeah. cool, I didn't win, but I was yeah, able yeah. to get items because I did that. So it's worth yeah. it to try them all. So to, to your point, right? Each boss um, drops a, a certain rare item that you can use for different upgrades, as Mo alluded to earlier as well. Um, every time you beat a boss with a different weapon, uh, you get that item again. So if I were to use the sword and I beat that first boss 10 times, I'm only getting it that first time. Um, but now if I go use the bow and beat it, you'll get it. So so, so as John alluded to some of them there, you have a sword, you have a bow, you have a shield. Think of it, you use it kind of like Captain America. Uh, you can kind of throw it around and hit the guys. Uh, you have a spear, which is awesome. Uh, it kind of has a long range and a throwing range. You have uh, the gauntlet, the twin fist, which you're again, you're just beating the crap out of people with your your gauntlets, and then the last one is the gun, which is my personal favorite, which we'll get into. But Sam, what uh, what's your comments on all the weapons? Um, I liked the bow a lot from the beginning. Um, one thing that I thought was really nice they added is the power shot. So it's kind of a charge as you pull it back that increases range. And if you release right when you hit max range, that little arrow indicator will flash and you'll do like triple damage. Mm -hmm. um, so that just, it feels really good when you can fire like several of those off in a row. Yeah. And it's something that uh, you can kind of work on right away. Um, and I would agree like the, the longer range weapons, I think people are going to find easier. Uh, that seemed to be, consistent from what people were saying in the discord that you know people were having a better time with the bow the gun the spear uh because you don't have to get as close and especially like you know th you think about the early bosses like the hydra he's got like one attack you have to worry about if you're staying at max bow range yep absolutely yeah um, yeah and i think i think the, the early on in the game you have like you still have like 50 health generally and staying away from enemies is a premium you can you can end up starting at 100 health, and generally you're going to be starting at 100 health, like, you know, not even too far into the game. But yeah, having that distance is really helpful. And I, I mean, like, I've only been able to beat the game with the gun one time, and I know, mm. I know Drew shares that sentiment with me. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think there's some value in it. But uh, what, what were like the, what was the first weapon, like, Sam, that you really kind of fell in love with? Um, I mean, I did not like the sword at first. 
I think the mm-hmm. sword might have been the last weapon I beat the game with. Um, but I, I, you know, they all kind of grew on me. The gun was the first time I made it to Hades, and that was my first time with the gun. So that kind of immediately clicked in a way the others didn't. Mm-hmm. But it was also the last one to unlock. So I just kind of learned the game more by then. Mm-hmm. Um, the spear I liked a lot more coming from because that's the that's the second one, isn't it? Yeah. The spear. Yeah. I did not like the shield at first. The shield is kind of weird. You, yeah. It takes some learning. I like the shield. It's it's um it's very Rygari and like it has the block. Um, mm-hmm. The first weapon I fell in love with was the spear because it had that Same. distance. Same. Yeah, you can you you can keep that distance, and there is one of the hammer upgrades is to make it extend much further and make it more powerful. And I swear you can like you can you, it goes across the whole screen from the middle of the screen to the edges. Yeah, it's it's almost as much range as the gun by yeah. that point. Yeah. And you can do a rapid fire on it where you just hold the button down, which usually mm-hmm. is like not something I need. Like I can press the button, but like just holding that button down is so nice. It's yeah, but so I would nice get that upgrade and then I'd forget and I'd still hit the button anyway. Oh, still hit it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that upgrade got me further with the spear. So I know it had an effect more than you know, maybe yeah. just pressing it constantly. It was really nice. It's funny um, because it's definitely one of those games where, I mean, how many times have you guys started the game? And right when you start, they give you some type of upgrade to start. But if you guys got in the hammer the very first time, Ooh. I did it like three times. And it's like, oh, baby, like you are <laughs> yes. pumped. Uh, but on the other end, there's times I'm like to the third level and I'm like, there's no way I'm beating Hades at my loadout right now. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to that fourth world, you're like, all I care about is buying that extra Titan blood or diamond or whatever's there, because regardless, I'm not going to beat Hades. Uh, But back to the weapons, my personal favorite was also the gun. Um, I found a good strategy. I beat the game four times. So my favorite strategy was is is with the gun, depending on your weapons. uh, In the beginning, it was very special based. Right. So you always have your your normal attack, and then your special attack. The special attack for the gun was you lobbed like a grenade, which you could lob over walls, you could go from a distance, and it was a big, big area. So I was getting very good at lobbing grenades and chitin, and lobbing grenades and chitin, running around, running around, and that's how I fought a lot of my enemies. Um, And then I'd finish them off by shooting the gun at close range. Uh, I did a lot of the upgrades, so you get like the mats ammo up to like 24 and it'd be pretty powerful but for the gun um again back to those upgrades you could get the bombs uh the grenades that were at plus 300 uh percent damage and um or the ones that were super fast you could throw three grenades at once um that's majority how i beat the game so many times i like i like that one the uh uh, well the first the when i started using the gun because of your advice i got the, the triple bomb attack yeah, which is really fun because it goes because you, you go tap, tap, tap and it goes yeah. boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. And um, if you get, a, if so you get like a boss in that circle, it's a ton of damage. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then the first time I beat the game was with the 300 percent bomb. And good. I didn't realize that you probably told me, but I didn't realize it that it actually is not even just a 300 percent. It actually expands the, the range. Oh, so the bomb is huge. And you can be hurt by it, but you yeah. really don't take that much damage. No. You take like two hit points or but, something. Yeah, but so it's if, not that bad. When you get to the fourth world, um, that, Ooh, that yes. hurts you because they're all in these small little confined levels that you throw the bomb and like the yeah. whole room fills up. <laughs> yep. There's no dodging it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, was I mean, the, the Daedalus hammer is pretty much, I mean, I found that Later on, my priority is to get that first. It's that, then the god boons, then coins early on, and then instead of coins, hearts uh, to get more health. And then at the very bottom is, you know, your darkness, your gems. But early on, you might want to just get the darkness, power up a little. Um, Although, I mean, if you can get to the point where you're consistently at least beating that first boss, you know, instead of those rare drops, you'll start getting darkness from them. And it's a pretty sizable amount. Yeah. Um, 
Now, yeah. I also love how the environment is essentially a live environment and it's breakable and interactive. And what I mean by that is um, one thing that I love is there's little vases and pots scattered around every level where you can break them and you'll get extra gold coins. We talked about the upgrades earlier on in the bedroom at the mirror. Uh, some of the upgrades are is that gold will be hidden in the pots. And then you can upgrade it from five gold per pot to 10 to 15 gold. So that gold starts adding up a lot um, when you're getting 15 gold. And, and, and John, one of your favorite perks, or, which we haven't talked about yet, cheap states, mm-hmm. where you can convert also those pots into having health. Mm-hmm. Um, so, John, I know you're a big fan of the cheap states. Why don't you tell us about those? Because those are found in the same room where the weapons are found. Yeah, yeah, you get keepsakes generally by giving gifts that you acquire in the game to all the different gods. Um, It took me a while to really figure out that really it's the first keepsake that you give each character. um, Well, the first gift that you give them, like they give you a keepsake. So if you hit your L button to look at your, I forgot what they call it, your journal or your diary or whatever, um, it will show you the hearts that you've, the gifts that you've given for every character to help keep track because you will lose track of like who you've given a gift to. Um, and I think I have one or two left now, mm-hmm. just a matter of getting them. Um, one of the gods that unlocks, I think after you beat the game for the first time, cause I hadn't seen her the like the ice God. Um, I hadn't seen her at all. I think until yep. I beat the game and then you have appears. to make it to Hades. You don't have to beat Hades. Okay. Um, so then she started showing up. So I, yeah, there's a few keepsakes I like. Um, the Skelly keepsake is cool because it's like giving you a like a, a fourth death defiance. Um, the thing, if you work the math on it, it gives you a death defiance, but it, I think it gives you 100 HP when you rank it all the way up. Um, and I still feel like if you have all three death defiances, it pays to have a higher max HP because in the end you'll have yeah. more max HP available to you Whatever. than if you use that keepsake. But still, um, it's a good one. My favorite, like I said, is the one that puts the health in the urns. I know that the the best strategy for these games, I'm sure Sam's going to say it, is you want to make yourself as powerful as possible because it's going to it's more of an investment. You won't need the health if you have more attack. But there is just <clears throat> something about getting through a level and maybe getting a couple of you know health packs to just keep yourself steady. I always feel like it's my it's my whoopee. You know, I just whenever I don't use that keepsake and I only use it now in like the third world, I don't use it in the first couple worlds. I, I use the first couple worlds to try to rank up some random keepsake um, because I don't really need the keepsakes very much in the first couple worlds. True. Um, but I always like in the third world, I'm always I always wanting to use that that health up. And so everybody's going to use them differently. Um, I've seen some strategies where there's some ways to play where you want a certain boon to start the game. Um, I think it's Athena, uh, where you get the dash deflect um, from Athena, and there's people that like to start the game with that. Um, So you can get a boon where it makes it that you will definitely see Athena. A friend of mine at work likes the coin one that gives you 100 100 coins or 125 coins to start. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah, 150. It's, so, it, it's when you rank it up, it goes 100, 125, 150. Right. Yeah. So if you use the boon, it does nothing for you except it just gives you that coinage. Um, oh, then you can change it. So he, uh, he'll use that in the first world just to get some money so maybe he can buy a boon or something. And then he changes it out. So I would think if you didn't care to start with a certain boon, that's a great one to start the game with because you can basically buy yourself a boon for free. Um, and, and it's a good one. Um, there's a couple of them that use something like that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I think the boons where they increase your attack power are probably the smartest ones to do. What, 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 which, what, which ones do you use, uh, Sam? Um, early on, I always wanted to take the chaos egg. Um, that gets that you lets in. you meet chaos without spending health to go yeah. into his area and then also increases the rarity of the stuff he will offer you. Um, I don't use it much anymore. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's because I found that starting out with the increased health being to the point where I don't really worry about getting through the first area Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, you can, I just, you can, you're you know, I, I can spin up. the health. Yeah. So it's only the rarity boost and it doesn't, unlike the God boons, it doesn't change the frequency with the, which those appear. So you're not guaranteed to even see chaos for a while. Yeah. And you could be using something else. Um, there are a pair of quite powerful keepsakes that you'll unlock if you get really far in. Uh, you know, they're not to get too far into it, but there is basically a true ending to the game if you complete 10 runs successfully. And after that, you'll be able to get the two of these. Um, so one of those is what I usually start with, and the other I'll end with depending on uh, what I've got in my loadout. Well, shit, um, I want to know what it is. John, can, can he spoil it for me? I'm curious. Are, are these the ones at the bottom of the keepsake, yeah. the bigger, the bigger eggs? Uh, no, those are companions. So mm. companions, you have to get really far in your relationship with a couple of characters. Not every uh-huh. character gives you one. Right. The only one I have is from Megara. Um, uh, she gives you a, a, a bat pet. Uh, it works a lot like the calls. Basically, it will you you press ZL. And Megara will come in and do her little thing with all the big shock waves in a line, and it'll hit enemies for you. Oh. Um, the interesting thing is you cannot you can use it on bosses, some bosses. You cannot use it like for Megara's. You can't use it on her because she's not going to help you kill her <laughs> or her sisters for that matter. Um, and you can't use it on Hades because they will not betray Hades because he's he's uh, there. Uh, he's in charge in the underworld. So they're okay. Mm. That's interesting. interesting. Little- but you can use it on Theseus, so that does help out. <laughs> you know, you, oh, I, I just want to say, Drew, before I forget, we had a discussion about Theseus um, and the strategy, and we all kind of said, mm. yeah, beat the Minotaur first. And you had said, no, I, I like to beat Theseus first. He's easy. And I was like, what? Give me a break. And then I realized when you're using that big mega bomb, Theseus yeah. is easy because he basically stays in the one place. Yeah, and you can just, just run, run in around. circles and just keep bombing him. Keep so dodging the with, Minotaur. Yeah, yeah, with that weapon, he actually is the easiest <laughs> to take well, out. I just find that even if you're trying to fight the Minotaur, he just scopes you out, and his arrow does a lot of damage. So mm-hmm. if you're taking four or five yeah. shots or more, he could really get your health down. And depending on how you're doing so far in the game, um, the third world is by far the hardest. <laughs> Uh, the enemies you come across uh, have shields, so you cannot attack from the front. They ha- You have those giant pink ball things that shoot oh. the butterflies out at you, which mm-hmm. have a ton of health and a million of those little butterflies. Um, there's just a ton of enemies in that world that are just, you know, hard to the be. They have that the that little regenerate. chariots. Yeah, they have the chair. Oh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. All these guys you kill turn into these little floating eyeballs that you then you have to kill. They have the chariots, which um, the small ones you can typically beat um, before they get to you. But some of those, the bigger ones are bigger fast ones. Okay. and a lot of health. So I, like I have armor. found the best way to approach the bigger ones is to get around like a hole and then dash back and forth over the yeah. hole. So when they come around and then they'll either stop or but they just can't get you because no matter what, they won't chase you forever. They mm-hmm. will at some point stop chasing you. So. Yeah. You find like a like a like a chasm and just dash back and forth over it. Yeah, the the enemies. There's so many enemies with like high armor, and I I want to I want to ask about the armor. Um, is the like some of these characters have armor and some of the upgrades do extra damage against armor? Is it fair to say that the armor like it seems like the all the enemies have an energy bar and then when it runs out it like resets. And is it like, is that the armor? Like It's like a second health bar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and before that first, the yellow health is gone. They do not flinch. Yes, so that's you will have though. to respect them because they will, even if you're hitting them constantly, they will just walk up and hit you. So if they're exactly. like glowing yellow, the, the, there's some characters yeah. that glow yes. yellow. Yeah. yeah, that's the ones so, with armor. But to, but to Sam's point, there's mm. like, if, if I have the gun that has like 24 ammo in it, Typically, I had to just hold rapid fire on those guys, and they won't move. They won't come at me. It's like they're stuck because I'm shooting them. If they have armor, it doesn't hold them back. They'll just run through your bullets. They'll get damage, but they'll still run at you. Yeah. Uh, so you have so to that's be a the only on armor. Is that it? That's 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 armor. Yeah, that's yeah. armor. 
Huh, okay. You really don't see it too much until the third world. Yeah. So, like, well, second what world is your, you see it a few times. What, like, like, so, Drew, like, what is your strategy, like, right now? Because I, I definitely need some advice. So, I, mm. I'd love for us all to kind of go through what our general strategy is as we play. Yeah. And just analyze it a little bit. I, I'm hoping to pick up some tips because I'm the one that's, that's, that's yeah. done the least. Well, like um, so, I said, like, I, when you play a game, tell me, tell me, what's the typical Drew run like? Yeah, so I'm still using the gun every run. I I switched the spare a couple times, but I I just fall back to the gun. So I think you have to see what your cards are dealt, right? So, uh, and what I mean by that, you have to see which type of gods you're getting, which type of boons you're getting. What uh, kind? Of, what what keepsake will you generally start with? Do you have a particular one? Um, uh, I really like the 30 percent damage from a distance because if i'm using the gun almost everything i do is from a distance i do like mole strategy of the hundred or was it your strategy i think the 150 gold and then switching it up to the 30 percent damage after that um it, you generally yeah. won't eat the yeah the first world has become so easy yes um yep. it's almost like you know hey the coins are nice i don't always do the coins but um yeah, no, it's yeah, the first world you you don't even need a keepsake. Yeah, my my strategy with the gun is um I usually upgraded the the gun to the 24 and faster shooting. So, it really depends on what I get in the beginning. I can either focus on that or I prefer to focus on the special upgrades. Um which is that plus 300 if I can get that. Uh I do like the chill with the gun. I find if you can get the chill with your attack um, in your rapid fire shooting a guy and it's slowing them down, you can defeat almost any enemy in the game with 24 bullets and chill. Um, so that that's one good strategy I have. But overall, my strategy is to just throw those bombs and specials and, and run around the area. And as I'm running, I, I shoot and clean up any low health guys with the gun. But I, I do that on repeat until the end of the game. I mean, it seems to me that with every weapon, there's a couple hammer upgrades that work really well together. Mm. So that's kind of how what kind of and that's why you should prioritize the hammer, because you can kind of build around what you get from that. Like with the gun, you've got like the triple bomb and then you can get the one that turns it into a missile that does 80 damage base. Mm-hmm. And anytime you get those two, then pretty much your only other priority is get any, get the highest damage boost to special boon from a god you can find. Correct. Whether it's because every god has a a boon that will boost special damage. Well, mm-hmm. some of them inflict a status instead of boosting damage. Yeah. But you know, find one. You'll you'll be able to find whether it's Poseidon's or Aphrodite's, or you know somebody who just makes your special do more damage and another thing like push them back or whatever. Yeah. So um, yeah. if you get, get that, if you level it up and you're, just you're spam rockets. That's the easiest build. Yep. When you do the rockets, Sam, cuz I actually like the rockets cuz they're faster, right? They shoot boom, boom, boom. Um you can combine that with the what did you say? The triple or the 300%? With the triple. So, with the triple. so what happens? So it fires three rockets? So you can shoot three rockets in a row, and then there's a s- delay before you can fire again. Okay. I, you know, I, just like, I, it's I, the length I, of the normal delay between one rocket and the next. It's just I, instead yeah. you can go boom, 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 and then you wait. See, I've, and I, then you basically uh, just run away or reposition yeah. or shoot your normal bullets or cast. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the rocket anymore. I used to be, but I like the lob. Um, the only problem with the lob is you're right. You fight fast enemies or or Hades who's fast. You can miss a lot of Takes a lot of your your throws, right? Um, I don't know. There's a lot of those late levels that I like to you know hide behind a wall and just lob grenades over it and and do it. You know, especially when you get into those laser beaming crystals, right? Um, you can just throw a bunch of bombs, hide behind a wall, throw a bunch of bombs, hide behind a wall. Nice. The nice part about the rocket, though, Drew, is like when the characters are getting closer to you, it really can help like shove them away, um, especially yeah, if it like if it pushes. That's you have the gun. If you have 24 ammo gun, yeah, they're not going to get I, close to you. I, I agree with you. I actually did like the rocket. And then you said just stick with the bomb. And then I found like, yeah, the bomb's nice because you can lob it from a distance, especially when you when the target's far away. Um, 
But I, I am curious now with some of those upgrades, maybe even like the 300%. I don't know if that works with the rocket. Um, that would be kind of interesting to kind of experiment with um, with those. I was always afraid if I used the rocket that I would lose the other thing. So, um, so when that's you, worth trying. Sam, when you do when you use the gun, what upgrade do you use on the gun? Do you use the first well, Andy, one that or the second one? Well, oh, the aspects. Yeah, because the first one increases your ammo and stuff. The second yeah. one increases. So there's, the uh, I usually use the one that boosts your power after a special. Yeah, like eight seconds. That's the one I've been going for. Yeah. Yep. You have to stand in the blast zone, so if you get that one that damages you, don't, <laughs> don't oh, get wait, that wait. one. You have to stand in it? Yes, you have to stand in the blast zone to get the buff. Oh, shit. I didn't know but that. That lasts for eight seconds. That's a tremendous amount of time. Oh, yeah. And if you just keep standing in it, it's unlimited pretty much, yeah. right? It if most if most of yeah. what you're doing is shooting them off, or if you have like the cluster bomb, which yeah. is another alternate, because yep. that shoots a bunch of bombs, they do 30% less 30%, damage, yeah. but you can hit one enemy with at least three of them. Yeah. So They're, they um, are fun to like very... I like doing the, yeah. the first one that gives you like all the ammo. Because you can, yeah, you can just, but all the all the Titan blood upgrades I've done have been on the first weapon. I think probably because I've gotten comfortable with them all, mm. and I don't want to try anything new yet. But I can definitely see experimenting with those different weapons. So later. I want to talk about now. Once you beat the game, because you beat it, John, it introduces a, a this new aspect called heat, heat mode or heat heats, heat. right? Mm -hmm. Um. So, so Sam, since you've beaten the game 10 times or more now, I'm interested to see your approach on this, right? Because after I beat it once, it's, it's very new. Again, they don't really – they explain it a little bit. And essentially what this is is there's probably 20 different things, and it's almost the opposite of upgrades. You have to make it harder, um, and there's things like you can increase uh, the enemy's uh, health, the, the amount of enemies you can do so – Everything in the shop costs more money. Uh, your health upgrade is not as much. And they say the key to this is never do more than one at a time. Like You don't just go in and do five uh, right off the bat, five heat, because they're screwing yourself. You want to do one heat, beat the deal. Yeah, so there, there is incentive to turn it up slowly. Yes. Because, as we mentioned before, the first time you beat a boss with a weapon, they will drop a special item. Titan blood, diamonds, ambrosia, mm -hmm. and titan blood again for each boss. Um, but once you unlock the ability to use the, the punishing pact, I think is what it's called. Um, each time for each heat level that refreshes. Yes. So now if I beat Megara or the furies, uh, at heat level one, they will, with the sword, they will drop a Titan blood again. Mm -hmm. If I beat them at heat level one with the spear again. They will drop another Titan blood. If I beat them at heat level two with the sword again, they will drop another Titan blood. Now you have to, the thing is though, you have to clear the game at that heat level before you unlock the bounty for the next heat level. So until I beat the game with the sword Correct. at heat level one, I have no reason to go to heat level two other than bragging rights. Yeah. It does nothing for you. I, I agree. Um, and to your point, if it's getting difficult, switch weapons, right? And then you can kind of reset a little bit. Um, but I, I'm getting to the point now where even though I have all these upgrades, the game is definitely getting harder, right? I'm on Heat 4 or 5, and some of these perks, you're going through them, you're like, oh, man, I don't want to turn any of these on. <laughs> uh, but I turned on recently the one where um, – it inc it adds what it, what does it say? It adds like a level of hardness to the bosses. Have you done this one yet, Sam? Yes. So the the first time I it did it, you every the first boss though, if you're well, at rank one. So rank one, I did it the first boss. It's almost unnoticeable, I would say. Yeah. I did it for rank two, which I fought my favorite boss, the Hydra, and it is ridiculously harder. <laughs> I have not fought the Hydra with that yet. So you know how it's the base that's set up almost like a half moon and the Hydra's in front of you and the other ones pop up. It breaks up the whole Hydra boss into these mini islands with like the lava between them. And it just, 
I constantly was taking damage from standing yeah, in the lava. It's like you're going to need a ranged weapon. You, it's, 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 I died. I died on the Hydra, which at this, you know, you guys at this point, you, you beat it to the first few levels without dying. Usually I made it to Hades without dying. Um, but yeah, some of these heats are getting ridiculously hard and making the game very difficult. Uh, that yeah. boss one, I've learned I will never turn that back on. I mean, like <laughs> early on, I was just I was turning on that one for the first boss because mm. not much trouble there. No. It basically, you know, lets Meg or whoever tag in the other Furies for yeah. attacks. It's not a big deal. Like, Go, you know, how on to level two. Moves. But the worst one I have found, I would usually turn on that one or the time limit because the time limit, it gives you nine minutes of floor. Like it can be a little annoying because then you start to get paranoid about like, I'm rushing through, I'm probably missing a fish or I'm probably missing, yeah. you know, gold from, from pots. But now if you run out of time, is it game minutes. over? Uh, well, it, it adds another nine minutes at each floor, but yeah, I, I've oh, never okay. run out of time. So if you beat the first floor in five minutes, you start the next one with 14. And it, it pauses when you're selecting boons. And if you pause the game, it does not pause out of combat, though. So you don't want to deliberate, like, which door do I go through? If you need <laughs> to think about it, pause the game. I'm going to try that one next. Uh, <laughs> the worst one, I think, run? is, and it's worth three heat. Yeah. The worst one is the one that makes all enemies move 20% faster. Oh, that yeah. one is. <laughs> I, I just beat it with that one. And after like four or five tries. And that came, I came off of like a streak of like three successful games. And yep. then I turned that one on and I was like dying in the third world. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Um, what's your fastest run? Do you know? Uh, I think 26 minutes. Oh, wow. Like that. I think mine was 30 sets, but that's good. What is, what is your overall strategy? I, I find my right now, my biggest problem is Theseus and the Minotaur. I just haven't figured out a way to beat them without, you know, using too many. Like, sometimes if you have the really powerful gun, Drew, like, you can, like, bomb your way through. And mm -hmm. I just try to take it slow. But, like, they still, like, I can, I can you know, fly through Meg and I can fly through the Bone Hydra. But, man, Theseus just they're, still they're slows me down. I mean, if I beat them without using a Death Defiance, I pretty much know I'm going to beat Hades. Mm-hmm. Because Hades if is... I have to use one, then I'm like, ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's it's a twofold thing. It means, one, I have all my Death Defiance for Hades. Right. And number two, it means my build is really good. You're right. It, it's like, it's a proof of concept. Yeah. Um, You can generally, like, a lot of times, like, late in the game, they'll let you, like, buy back. There's that one... <laughs> I love that one guy in the third world that will um, let you get all your death defiance back just for free. Mm. I love that guy, Patrocus. especially if I've had some trouble. But usually I don't need that. I wish he came after um, Theseus because you can usually buy one death defiance back for a couple hundred. Um, and then if you switch to the um, the Skelly keepsake, you can kind of get another one. Um, but yeah, just it's. You know, you got you got Theseus targeting you, and that Minotaur man's always running. I try to dash through him when he charges me and get behind him, and then he'll come back and I'll dash. But like every so often, he does the charge yeah. when he's running at you. The Minotaur is honestly he has started to irritate me more than Theseus because Theseus is incredibly <laughs> predictable. Yes, but the Minotaur he is, but he isn't. Because, like, when he charges, you want to dash to the other side of one of the pillars and have him hit it. But sometimes he just, like, hugs the pillar and slides around it uh, and hits you anyway. And mm -hmm. then when he gets low on health, his jump strikes start shooting out shockwaves. And it's really difficult to predict where those are going to go. Because mm -hmm. they seem to spread in, like, a random pattern from where mm -hmm. he lands. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't land anywhere near you, but you get hit by those. And, yeah, it can be. And he has way more health. So I have started taking Theseus out first because if I have any sort of good offense and if I can get behind him and not have him block stuff, he will die way faster. Yeah, because he his pattern is generally he'll like he'll 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 target you and then he'll strike at you and then he'll like because he has a shield and then he turns around and walks back slowly and you can just like bam 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 bam. But that, yeah, that Minotaur is always just running around, and it, it's usually, if I can get rid of one of them, 
I'm way better off. It's just a combination and, of the two. Well, I have much. gotten to the point too, where if I have like, you know, if I have like the bomb or if I have like a really powerful cast that will hit both of them, mm -hmm. I'll just do as much damage as I can to either one of them, to both mm -hmm. of them at once. Yeah. And just try to just don't drag the fight out. <laughs> um, the, the Cerberus battle. It's funny that you're able to beat the game several times in a row. Uh, my friend at work is, is able to do the same thing, and it like drives me nuts every time. It's like, oh my god, it's like so easy. At this point, I can often get to Hades, um, but I, I, when, I, when I get there, I often really have no chance by the time I get there. Um, the, before Cerberus, those rooms are kind of hit or miss. Um, I think this strategy seems to be that the you want to find the dog food quickly i think we kind of discussed this in the group um do you want to try to go through all those rooms and get like all the boons you can or do you try to hold on to your health and not risk it um it does seem to me that the dog food is always in one of the rooms that doesn't have the skull on it like one of the difficult rooms um i've never seen it in a skull room so it's probably I not have. worth going there I have, have you have. Yeah, it lies. Oh, maybe later in the game. Because that does usually indicate a mini boss, and then sometimes the mini boss isn't there. It's it's the fountain room. Okay, and that's got to be later in the game though, because I still haven't seen it. But uh, maybe you're right. I generally will avoid I those just anyway. Let the dice determine. I I let the random number generator determine it. If I find the fountain, because I don't believe you can go back to the fountain, can you? I don't think so. I think you have to do the fountain. So I'm going to take that health when I can get it yeah. and fight Hades yeah. when I'm at as high health as I'm going to have. The first time I got to Hades, I had to go through all of those rooms before I found the fountain. And so I, I thought you just had to go through them all. And then the second time through, I found it like on the second try. And I was like, ooh, this See, is now nice. I, I go through them, all of them regardless. Are you afraid of losing it. health, though? No. Sometimes I will I will go for the ones that have boons. Yeah. Um, or yeah, I, if there's something in the shop I really want, I'll try to get the coins. If there's one with the coins, did you mm -hmm. ever get the like the anvil in the shop where it like takes away a boon? I usually oh. don't. I don't. I'm it's not a fan kind of, of it. Desperation move. It takes I, one of your hammer upgrades away and gives you two random ones. Yeah. I don't, yeah. You don't get to pick which one. So if you it's a desperation move because <laughs> if you don't like what you got for hammer, then you might as well. I, but if you I, like even one of yours, yeah. that might be, that's going to be, you know, yeah. Murphy's law, that's going to be the <laughs> one it takes away from you. And it's going to give you like, right before you fight Hades, it's going to give you, you know, deal more damage to stuff with armor and Hades doesn't have armor. Yeah. So he does summon I, guys with armor, but still, I do like when, um, you can sometimes sell stuff that you got along the way that, ended up being useless at this point or you pitch like a an epic you know boon because of, you know there was no other good ones and then you can sell it for like 200 gold sometimes which i liked i like the ability to sell them well or you can exchange so sometimes gods will offer to replace your boon and Correct. if you notice they will always replace it at the same level at a higher rarity so there is an advantage if you're offered like an epic level boon to pick it, even if it's not what you want, just if you anticipate, mm -hmm. oh, well, maybe, you know, if I get Poseidon's epic level, whatever. But what I really want is Artemis's epic, Artemis's heroic level special upgrade. The only, I might be able to get that because I picked this now. My mm -hmm. only problem with the, up, uh, the replacement of a boon is when it says this will replace dot, dot, dot. I don't know what that is. I don't remember the name of it. You know, so like I wish it said replaces attack like plus fifty percent attack damage. Now there is something of a naming convention I've caught on to for some. Okay. Like all of the ones that upgrade your special are called something flourish. Okay. So that that you know that's your special at least. Yeah. Whether and then if you know what your special is right then you can you can figure it out. Okay, that's a good point. And well, and it is the case too, because be, the whole reason it replaces is you can't have multiple things that upgrade the same thing. Correct. With some exceptions, like no. the ones that do stuff when you get hit, you can have as many of those as you want. Yeah. But you cannot have boost my special damage and boost my special damage again. Yeah. Gotcha. That the one will replace the other. Speaking now, of uh, speaking of the boons, 
Do um do any of you guys have any like favorite boons that you like always go for or like a particular god you're always looking to go for that that you just no matter what weapon you use or whatever you're always shooting for? Uh not particular for me. It, it, it varies. I tend to cycle through the weapons. Um I just pick whichever one has the thirst gets you 20% more darkness. Mhm. Uh, and because of the way the Titan blood collection works, you know, I don't have to raise the heat too high if I can just keep cycling through, go back That's to the sword, true. go back to the bow. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I like. Had, so there's some weapons now. I usually stick to the same aspect with each weapon. And now, like, if I'm using the sword, I will go for a cast build um, because huh. I, the aspect of Poseidon. And that makes it so when you use your bloodstones, your special will immediately break them free. And then you can use them again. So they do a lot of damage. Special, oh. run away, cast, 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 special, repeat. Because the cast will generally stay in the enemy for at least some minimum amount of time, unless you defeat them, of course. But um, sometimes, like for the bosses, it'll kind of go and go in and then eventually drop out. You're saying if you use your special on that enemy, they'll cast will immediately come yeah, out. That's that's what the aspect yeah, of but I, it does. I that. Like... The more you upgrade it, it increases your cast damage. That that's my thing, but I like I like the perk when you have your cast inside the enemy, you do like thirty percent more damage too. Mm-hmm. So in that case, I yeah. want my cast to stay in the enemy. Yeah, that right. wouldn't work well. Right. Then you're <laughs> casting just to get that sort of debuff. You're not casting to do the damage up front. I mean, you get some damage. Yeah, but You'll that's... take the damage you can get. But yeah. in this case, really, what I want I want to get see Artemis as much as possible. She has a good cast. I don't necessarily need that. It's one of the better ones because it can crit. Um, yeah. And it, it's just pretty solid all around. But she has one called Exit Wounds, which makes it so every time the Bloodstone falls out of an enemy, they take damage. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, how many so you're just combining you that together. Oh, how many Bloodstones do you have? Three? Is it uh, typically the there? last time I used this successfully, I had four because I got a Chaos Boon to get me plus one. Okay. Yep. Nice. I I only recently started using the cast. Just I just did a fun run because I had really ignored it completely. Um, and man, yeah, they are fun. They're powerful as heck too. Um, I I I need to find what my favorite one is. Um, I like um, I like doing dash damage. I think it's just necessary because you're you're constantly having to dash in this game. Um, I really like um dash deflect which i think is the one that athena has mm-hmm. otherwise i like the lightning um I like the lightning you can get one. the lightning and then what's that thing when you bolt somebody and then they be they have like jolted. they're more vulnerable yeah the jolted yes um, so those are have great combos that. when you're using the gun special because you're constantly kiting around mm-hmm. well i would so, say dash deflect is one you just take whenever you take yeah. it whenever it shows up. Like it doesn't have to be high rarity. You don't have to spin pomegranates on it because the damage isn't really what you want. You want the deflect. deflect That's where the yeah. real damage comes from. Because you deflect can, is, you can throw Theseus as a spear right back at him. Deflect is so powerful in the game too. Getting it on your attack is great. Not so much the special as for some weapons, but like when you're using the gun or or just anything spear. Like if you're deflecting, it's just great to have, especially. Um, what are they? The witches or whatever in the third? I think they're in the third world or maybe the second world where they start shooting the purple oh, um, yeah. weapons out. And man, the whole screen could just it just becomes yeah. like <laughs> it becomes just like a like a shooter, you know, like a hell, like a hell shooter. So um, bullet hell. Um, the So having the deflect there is so handy because you're just like do 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 and everything well, goes got, away. I got deflect on the standard attack for the gauntlets once. And that's just. You don't even have to time it. It's just a continuous deflect yeah. everything in front of me. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I like those. One of my other favorite ones, I can't remember where you get it from. I've gotten it a handful of times, is you can get bonus coins in each chamber. So as you finish oh, yeah. each chamber, you get bonus coins. And that's the time when you get towards the end of the game and you'll have like 1,300 gold. Yeah. You know? That's, that's huge really if you fun. get it early on. I've yes. gotten that like one of the first or second encounters, and that's huge. I take that in a heartbeat. To me, I think you pick that over yeah. anything else, and just yeah. anything else. You you'll find some other upgrades exactly. later. If you get them early, you're you're golden. And that was yeah. the first time I beat the game. Is the second boon I got was Aphrodite's 
get more health whenever you get health. So every time you get a centaur heart, get like 40% more health. Mm, and so by the time good. I got oh. to Hades, I had 400 health. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just under 400. Health. Oh, the max HP, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one too, where if you get a gift, it also gives you max HP, which is just a nice little whatever. It's almost like there's two ways to increase your HP. You can find max HP or you can find a gift. Hmm. Um, but then other times you have to choose between a gift and maybe something else you want. But it, it, it's a nice thing to like stumble onto as well. Having health is really handy. <laughs> well, to your point earlier, John, it's it's so handy because every time you die, your defiance comes back at half health. Yeah. So essentially, the more health, you know, I got one the other day. I shared with you guys. You got point eight. It was like one health every point eight seconds. It was incredible. So yeah. I I was on Hades and I was just regen in health. I was just hiding and then I would go fight him and then I would go hide again. That would be so nice. That was I, nice. I really have a hard most, time with 80s. The most ridiculous one I had, though, is I got the two hammer upgrades for the sword. The one that makes it so you regain... It reduces your max health by a lot, but it makes it so you regain two health every time you hit somebody with an attack. Yes! And it's got the rapid attack that yeah. just yes. turns your attack into a continuous combo. And then I managed to get almost every boon that boosts your defense. Huh. Yeah, that's yeah. When so you're close encounters I, like that, I was too nervous and too. I didn't want to blow it. I almost think I could have fought Hades and not even attempted to dodge anything. At Just that stand point. still, yeah. Because I had like take less damage from people close to me. I had take less damage. Period. Mm. I had I had deflection on something. So I have to ask. I want that little spoiler alert here, but that's okay. The first time you guys fought Hades and you beat him, and then all of a sudden you see his health bar regen for phase two. <laughs> it's just a repeat. I've never seen anything like that before. No, you just, he turned you just it on. authentically it was, have to beat him twice. It was a lot harder the second phase. Oh, yeah, because the hands reach up, right? Uh, be, I, and, I usually don't find the second phase much harder. Really? Yeah, I mean. He's got the, the same thing, health, though. I, I can usually make it pretty... I can almost beat the first phase without dying. I feel like I die a lot in the second phase. I mean, you just have to realize when he's charging up the laser thing. Because that will wipe that your health fast. Yeah, that does. Yeah, just but hide I mean, behind one of the little holes. You can always hide behind the thing. Oh. The only time it's given me a lot of trouble, I had the punishment on that increases trap damage. And I found oh. out the hard way that those hands count as traps. Oh, uh, they, they, they oh, were doing you. 100 HP to me. Holy crap. Because it, it's like 500% increase to damage. Yeah. yeah, you're thinking you're in the clear. Like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to have any more traps. I just avoid them. But, all right. Um, do you guys have anything else to add? Or before we wrap this up, maybe we, each of us give us a little final review. Um, Sam, what's your final review or final take on Hades? And we can add an opening review here. What's your final take? Uh, like I said, I mean, I'd recommend it. Uh, I'd recommend it to people who like roguelikes. I'd recommend it even to people who don't, because it, it kind of does some things. I mean, it's more light roguelike than some. Uh, it's a bit more generous in rewarding you even when you fail. And it strings. if you like story, it puts enough there to string you along story-wise. Even when you're failing, that's part of the story. Um so, I mean, yeah, it's I don't know if it's necessarily a must play, but it's it's one of the best games that's come out recently um, at the very least. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think too many people are going to be disappointed in it Read there. John, what's your final final review? Um, without thinking too hard, I think this might be my favorite roguelike ever. Um, I hope I'm not missing something I might be, but. Um, I mean, if you want to call Into the Breach a roguelike, which it kind of is, I guess, maybe it's second favorite. But um, yeah, this is I agree with you, Sam. This is definitely a roguelike that if you don't like roguelikes, you might still give this a try. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, Supergiant Games has this weird thing in all their games where they have sort of a male narrator. And it's just so good that Zagreus, just the way he narrates as he goes, it, it just does such a good job. It's just so smooth. And it keeps you really engaged with the character. You really feel like you're playing that character as he's talking. 
Um, every time you do a run, you can run into some really fun little upgrades. Um, you know, after you beat the game, you could stop, but you just want to keep doing more. There's all the keepsakes you can get. There's the weapon upgrades. There's always just something you can do. Um, I'll tell you one thing I haven't been able to do yet is the fishing. I have the fishing pole. I've never figured out where to fish. So every time I do a run, I'm me. always kind of on the lookout. I just don't, I don't see it. So, um, that's something new that I haven't done before. Um, every little run, you have like a little goal. Um, yeah. and right now mine is to finish out my keepsakes. Um, just try to rank up a keepsake, um, get to some boss. There's some runs where I was like, look, I don't care. I just want to beat the bone Hydra so I can get another diamond because I need to unlock something. Yeah. Um, there's just so much fun to have this game. And just as like, you know, you guys, like you've beaten the game four times, 10 times, 20 times, um, and you're still playing. So it just shows you how rewarding the game is. And I will say that I cannot wait for a limited run release of this because they did do a limited run of Transistor. So there's probably going to be one of there's no doubt going to be one for Hades. And, you know, I'll be first in line. <laughs> on that one so um definitely pick this out this is just it's so worth it 25 bucks easy money um yeah my, my last say was uh, i agree john for the for the money it's definitely worth it uh you definitely get um all there is to it it's definitely a well-polished game the the, the controls and gameplay are absolutely fabulous it's just um there's definitely some things in there that definitely make it feel not repetitive but I mean, I keep playing and I can't stop, but there's definitely something that I've, I've played other games like, like Dungeon and stuff like that where I want to play that more. Um, I, I don't know what it is, but... Um, I, I think with games like Gungeon, you'll have, you know, the first floor boss, there's like three of them. Yeah. It'll be different every time. You know, yeah. it's just each run feels a bit more distinct. Like in I, Hades, I, yeah. once, once you... Once you've played through each area with each weapon, it doesn't change much more than that. I, I like think every time you go through Asphodel, you know you're fighting the Hydra. You might or might not fight, you know, the witches or the Medusa, the Gorgon, and the whatever the stompy guy is that is with the <laughs> Gorgon. Mm -hmm. But like you're gonna fight one of those two. Like the enemy groups start to feel the same. Like I feel like there needs to be more enemies or more. Yeah, something. And, and yeah, like, you have variations. I praise to give a game like to be like, oh, yeah, this twenty five dollar game started to feel stale 30 hours in. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. And I think, you know, talking to you guys, I think my next attempt is to start using more of the other weapons again and maybe trying to that. But um, I think I've reached about my limit and uh, I'm happy with it. No regrets. Well worth the money. And I had an absolute blast playing it. And I had a blast talking with you guys tonight about it. So, uh, Sam, thank you for joining us um john this was this was fun we'll have to find out what our next game we want to do with this is but um any last well, let's 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 get back together again when the uh hades dlc eventually comes out i'm sure it will, I'm sure it will. <laughs> um all right so that is all uh for dads after dark uh as always make sure to check out our twitter handle and dads uh after dark and um that's all i got john so thank you very much for joining us tonight and i'll see you guys later later dad later sam <laughs> <laughs>